Welcome back. You're still watching The Globe here on SABC News Channel. I am Tipi Sotmakwitla. We continue with certain news, uh, both regionally and internationally. The United States ambassador to the United Nations says she hopes her country's engagements with South Africa will lead to a change in Pretoria's position on Ukraine. President Cyril Ramaphosa spoke with his U.S. counterpart, President Joe Biden, on the 8th of April, sharing views on the ongoing humanitarian crisis and the impact of the war on food security for Africa. South Africa has sought to take a neutral stance on the issue at the United Nations, but in other fora expressed a view that the war might have been avoided had NATO's eastern expansion not provoked Russia. Here uh, is now the conversation between Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield and SABC's Sharon Rice Peace. Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield, welcome to SABC News. Thank you. Delighted to be with you. We are a few days shy, Ambassador, of the two-month mark in the war in Ukraine, and three major narratives emerge today. One is that we are now close to five million refugees, that Russia has started a fresh offensive in the Donbas region, and that the United States State Department is looking at designating Russia as a state sponsor of terror. What would such a designation achieve? Well, certainly, we have already taken actions uh, against the Russians in terms of sanctions, in terms of designating uh, many of the oligarchs, uh, including members of, of Putin's family and, and some members of, of, of the government. Uh, those actions will certainly increase uh, should that state sponsorship uh, go through, and it's the State Department that's leading that process. But we have already put tremendous pressure on the Russians for the actions that they have taken in Ukraine. It's, it's actually hard for me to believe that it's only uh, been uh, five weeks uh, that we have uh, been uh, involved in this crisis. Uh, it's 5 million refugees, but it's 10 million plus almost 11 million people who've been impacted by this war. We've seen the devastation uh, in Ukraine, the destroyed buildings, the destroyed infrastructure. But worse than that is the destroyed lives that we have watched. Uh, I traveled to Moldova and Romania a couple of weeks ago and met with uh, women and children who had escaped. And the impact on their everyday existence is just uh, uh, remarkable. Uh, the fact that they are able to still uh, survive uh, in spite of uh, Russia's relentless uh, attack on their country. Ambassador, what we have from the UN perspective to date is a vetoed Security Council resolution that demanded Russia's withdrawal, two General Assembly resolutions on the political and humanitarian tracks that one can argue isolated Russia but made little difference on the ground. A third GA resolution that saw Russia suspended from a seat, its seat on the Human Rights Council. Council. Uh, uh, and then, of course, that ICJ ruling right, right at the beginning that ordered Russia's troops out of Ukraine, efforts that have done little to change the calculus on the ground. Would you agree, therefore, Ambassador, that the global peace and security architecture is no longer fit for purpose, particularly when dealing with countries that hold veto power? We are continuing to put pressure on Russia. Russia is feeling the isolation here at the Security Council. We're seeing them change their strategies uh, here in the, in, in the Council. So the international system is working. Uh, what we can't account for is a, uh, an authoritarian leader who is not prepared to respond to the international community and the impact that is having on the Russian economy and the Russian people. Uh, so we will keep the pressure on. We will keep pressing uh, the, the Russians to, to uh, adhere to the international community, and we will keep supporting the Ukrainian people. And the, I, as I said, the isolation is being felt. We had two, three successful General Assembly uh, resolutions against the, the Russians, including to suspend them from, from the Human Rights Council. This is a huge, huge uh, success. And I can tell you uh, the Russians here in New York are feeling the discomfort, and I know that they're feeling that discomfort in Moscow as well. 
Ambassador, we've heard so many explanations as to the, what caused this war, that this was about Ukraine seeking to join NATO or the European Union. We've heard that this is about genocide against Russian-speaking people in the Donbas region and the lack of implementation of the Minsk agreements. We've heard that this is about President Putin's desire to rebuild the Russian empire of old. We've also heard that this is due to the fact that the United States and European partners did not heed warnings over the decades that an East expansion of NATO would be a provocation. So I want to hear from you as to what you believe the main causes of where we find ourselves today are. We're here today because of Russian aggression. We're here today because Russia attacked its neighbors and decided it would not listen to the international community. President Biden met with Putin. Uh, he had several phone calls with Putin. Secretary Blinken met with his counterpart, uh, the foreign minister, Foreign Minister Lavrov. We actually sat down with the Russians and tried to work with them to find a diplomatic way forward. They were not interested. They were not willing to listen. Ukraine is not a member of NATO, but we do believe in the rights of a country uh, it, to choose their partners. We do believe in the open door policy of NATO. But that was not enough for, for the Russians to carry out this aggression against the Ukrainians. And in fact, what they have done, they have succeeded in unifying the, the uh, they've unified NATO, they've unified uh, the Europeans, and they have encouraged the Ukrainians to seek NATO membership when early in this process, only about 30% of Ukrainians actually thought NATO membership was uh, important to them. Now that number has more than doubled. So it's Russia's actions. It's Russia's aggression. Uh, it's Putin's unbridled ambitions that have uh, led to all of this. It is not what was done by the United States. This is not a war between the United States and Russia. It's not even a war between Russia and the Europeans. It's a Russian attack and aggression on its own neighbor. South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa told the South African Parliament in March the war could have been avoided if NATO had heeded the warnings from amongst its own leaders and officials over the years that its eastward expansion would lead to greater, not less, instability in the region. Is President Ramaphosa wrong? I can't speak for President uh, Ramaphosa. I can only speak for the United States and the positions that we have taken. And we have made every effort to negotiate uh, with the Russians to understand their security uh, issues and try to address their security issues at the negotiating table. And you n will know that we were in a Security Council meeting when this attack happened. Uh, this attack happened a day before Secretary Blinken was to have another meeting uh, with Lavrov to discuss Russian concerns. They were not interested in diplomacy. Uh, they were only interested in, in their own ambitions and their own aggressions. And they have to uh, understand that an attack uh, like the attack that they have taken uh, against Ukraine would get a response. And we made that clear to, to President Putin very early in this, that we would put sanctions like they have never seen before. And we've done that, and we've done it in unity with our European partners, and we will continue to ramp up that pressure. We do realize that this uh, war is having an impact in the rest of the world, and we want to hear African voices Voices. African voices matter in this. African countries uh, need to, to, to express their views on this. And we need to make sure that they understand that this is against the core principles of the UN Charter. It is against the sovereignty and the integrity of, uh, of, of a country's border. And every African head of state uh, should be worried about what this means uh, globally. So let me push you on that, right? The, the, the differences between Pretoria and Washington's position on Ukraine have been well ventilated. In that context, what message did President Biden deliver to his South African counterpart? They spoke on April 8th. Uh, and what would you like to see from the, the South African uh, president in particular? 
Uh, we had a very, very uh, productive conversation uh, with uh, President Ramaphosa. Uh, we wanted to hear his positions, and we shared with him our concerns about what is happening in Ukraine and how we can address this as partners around the globe. And so the results of, of those discussions will hopefully lead to some reassessment uh, of, uh, of the South African position on, on Ukraine, uh, and in particular, uh, a clear understanding of what this means for, uh, for Ukraine and what it means for, for the globe. But again, the, uh, Rep, uh, President Ramaphosa uh, we'll have to explain uh, South Africa's position and why South Africa has taken the position that uh, it has taken. But we have been prepared to listen uh, to South Africa, listen to other partners uh, from, uh, from the African continent uh, to help them understand our position. And in particular, this is not a war between Russia and the United States. Final this question is, for you, Ambassador. I know I have to let you go. What does accountability look like? You know, there's a commission of inquiry appointed by the Human Rights uh, 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 Council in Geneva. We hear talk about nuclear weapons, chemical weapons, that kind of stuff. Like, what does the future look like here, and what's the trajectory towards peace? Well, it's clear that uh, what the Russians have done in Ukraine uh, constitute war crimes, and they will be held uh, accountable. What that looks like in the end will uh, depend on the uh, institutions that will be working on that. Uh, but we are working with the Ukrainian prosecutor's office to help them to collect uh, evidence and to have that evidence ready to present to the institutions that uh, will bring Russia's uh, crimes before the international community. And what we want to see in the end is peace. We want Russians, uh, Russian troops out of Ukraine. Uh, and we want to work with the Ukrainian people to help them uh, to start the process of rebuilding uh, their nation and rebuilding their lives.